Nine years into his reign, he attends a meeting of the small council. Lord Corley's Valerian brings to the council's attention that the alliance in the free cities known as the Triarchy is trying to claim the stepstones for themselves, warning that Westerosi ports could be badly affected, but Viserys dismisses his concerns. Master of Coin Lyman Beesbury brings up that, at the request of Prince Demon, the Crown has invested significant money in the retraining and re-equipping of the city watch, and he urges Viserys to make the prince fill his seat on the table to inform the council on his progress as commander. Viserys assures him that his gold is well invested. Otto Hightower brings up the subject of the heir's tournament, which Viserys has planned for the approaching birth of his next child and hopeful son. Grand Maester Mellows reminds Viserys that they cannot be certain that the child will be a boy, but Viserys expresses his confidence that it will be. Viserys undergoes treatment from his maesters for an infected wound he suffered from sitting on the Iron Throne. He accepts the advice of Maester Mikon to have the wound cauterized. Viserys goes to see his wife Emma, who is taking a bath. Viserys expresses his confidence to her that the child will be a boy, telling her of a dragon dream he had of their son being born wearing Aegon the Conqueror's crown, amidst the sound of thundering hooves, splintering shields, and ringing swords, and all the dragons roaring as one as Viserys placed his son upon the Iron Throne. Emma insists that boy or girl, it will be their last, after several miscarriages and stillbirths, and one child dead in the cradle, a total of five within ten years, she cannot bring herself to mourn another child. The small council is convened to discuss the excessive violence employed by Demon and the City Watch. Otto Hightower insists that Demon's actions can no longer go unchecked, but Demon defends his actions, stating that he was simply making the city safe for the guests arriving for the heirs' tournament. Viserys agrees with Demon, but questions his overly violent methods. Demon and Otto get into an argument about Demon's wife, Lady Rhea Royce, much to Viserys's exasperation. When Otto rises to Demon's bait of mentioning his own dead wife, Viserys reminds Otto that Demon loves to provoke him, and that he should not indulge him. Viserys gives Demon permission to continue enforcing his laws, but warns him not to put on another performance like the previous nights. After Demon leaves, Viserys comments that Demon's new city watch might be a good thing, as the city has been in decline since the death of his grandmother, Elisan Targaryen. The following day, Viserys commences the heir's tournament, greeting his guests, praising the competing knights, and announcing that Queen Emma has begun her labors. After Lord Boraemon Baratheon asks Princess Rhaenys for her favor, calling her, the queen who never was, Otto tells Viserys he could have Lord Boraemon's tongue out for that. Viserys decides to let it slide, though he does applaud happily when Boraemon is knocked off his horse by Esser Kristen Cole. After Demon defeats Otto's son, Esser Gwain Hightower, Viserys receives news of Emma's labor, and rushes to her side. To his horror, Grand Maester Mellows explains that the child is in breach, and that they must either cut open her womb to free the baby, a procedure that will almost certainly kill her, or risk losing both. Despite being appalled by the necessity of such a choice, Viserys grudgingly gives his consent for the maesters to cut into Emma's womb. As the maesters remove the newborn baby, Viserys weeps over his dead wife's body. Mellows informs him that the baby is a boy, and Viserys says that he is to be given the name Balin, in honor of his father, Balin the Brave. However, at that moment, the infant prince begins choking in the Grand Maester's arms, and passes away a few hours later. Some time later, a funeral is held outside King's Landing, for Queen Emma and Prince Balin. Viserys is nearly frozen with grief and shock, and can only watch tearfully as Rhaenyra orders her dragon Cyrax to light his wife and son's pyre. That night, the small council convenes, as Otto Hightower insists that they need to discuss the succession now that Emma and Balin are dead, though Viserys is in too much grief to want to discuss this. Otto and Melos argue that it would destabilize the realm for Demon to become king. Melos even implies that Demon may try to kill Viserys to take the throne, a claim Viserys angrily rejects. He reminds Otto that it was his own idea to put Demon in command of the city watch, after arguing against every other appointment Viserys tried to make for him. Despite Otto's arguments, Viserys refuses to exile his brother from King's Landing. Otto and Melos suggest Viserys name Rhaenyra his heir, but Viserys refuses to choose between his brother and daughter. When the council begin to argue, 
Visories furiously berates them all for behaving like crows squabbling over a corpse while he is still mourning his wife and son, and storms out. Later, while a disconsolate Visories works on a large model of old Valyria, he is visited by Otto's daughter, Alison Hightower. She brings him a history book to distract him, knowing his love for the subject, and offers her condolences for his loss, relating her experience of losing her mother, which Visories appreciates. At a small council meeting, Visories is informed by Otto that Demon bought a pleasure house on the Street of Silk, where he made a speech toasting Prince Balin, and styling him, the heir for a day. Enraged, Visories summons Demon to the Great Hall, where he confronts him over the insult. When Demon doesn't deny saying it, Visories accuses him of celebrating his own rise, rather than comforting his grieving brother and niece. He reminds Demon that he has always defended him from the rest of the small council, to which Demon retorts that he should have named Demon his hand, as he is his brother. He tells Visories that he needs him by his side, as he is weak, and needs protection from the small council, who all use him for their own ends, Otto Hightower in particular. At this, Visories declares his intention to name a new heir. When Demon insists he is his brother's heir, Visories retorts, not anymore, and orders him to return to his wife at Runestone. After Demon leaves, Visories accidentally cuts his finger on the Iron Throne. Later that evening, Visories summons Rhaenyra to Balerion's shrine, and asks her what she sees when she looks at the dragons. She says she sees their family, and that the belief that Targaryens are more god than man is only because of their dragons. Satisfied with her answer, Visories warns Rhaenyra that the dragons are a dangerous power that should never have been trifled with, one that caused the doom of Valyria, and could destroy their family too if they are not careful. He announces his intention to name her as his heir, apologizing to her for wasting the years since her birth wanting for a son. He tells her that he believes she could be a great queen, and that he knows her mother did too, but warns her that the Iron Throne is the most dangerous seat in the realm. To cement his trust in her, Visories tells Rhaenyra a secret known only by the king and his heir. Aegon the Conqueror was not solely motivated by ambition and lust for power to conquer Westeros. Just as Daenys Targaryen foresaw the doom of Valyria, Aegon had a vision that foretold the end of the world of men. Aegon foresaw the end would be preceded by a terrible winter descending from the north, and that what lurked within that storm would destroy the world of the living, unless the kingdoms of men united against it with a Targaryen to lead them. Since Aegon's time, the Targaryen kings have passed knowledge of Aegon's vision, which he dubbed, the Song of Ice and Fire, to their heirs, to ensure Westeros was ready when the evil Aegon foresaw finally descended upon mankind. The nobility of the realm is gathered, and Visories watches as each lord declares fealty to him and Rhaenyra as his named heir. He then stands and officially names Rhaenyra Princess of Dragonstone and heir to the Iron Throne. Half a year later, a small council meeting is held to discuss the death of Lord Commander Ryan Redwin. Mellows assures Visories that he died peacefully in his sleep. As the council discusses finding Esser Ryam's replacement on the Kingsguard, Corley's Valerian interrupts the meeting to demand something be done about the crabfeeder, whose forces have now destroyed four of his ships. Visories refuses to start a war with the free cities, who he says are undoubtedly supplying the crabfeeder's armies. Lord Corley's points out that Viserys's inaction has allowed Demon to take Dragonstone, to which Visories responds that he has acted by sending envoys to Pentos and Volantis in hopes of finding common cause. Rhaenyra speaks up, suggesting Visories send his dragon riders to the Stepstones as a show of force, embarrassing Visories, who, at the suggestion of Otto Hightower, has Lord Commander Harold Westerling take Rhaenyra to help choose Esser Ryan's replacement on the Kingsguard, seeing as this knight will help protect her as well. Some time later, Visories shows Alicent his model of old Valyria, telling her about their city, culture, and magic. When she asks if he believes Westeros could be a new Valyria, he responds that nothing will ever match the glory of Valyria at its height. Visories accidentally drops and breaks a model dragon, which Alicent picks up and hands back to him, as they share a quietly intimate moment. Visories asks after Rhaenyra's well-being, since she hasn't spoken more than a few words to him recently. Alicent tells him it will take time for Rhaenyra to open up again, remembering how it took time for her after her own mother's death. She suggests Visories approach Rhaenyra instead, to which he quips that he would rather face the Black Dread. Visories asks Alicent not to mention their talks to Rhaenyra, 
as he is worried that she might not understand them. Later that afternoon, in the gardens of the Red Keep, Viserys meets with Lord Corlys and Princess Rhaenys, in hopes of patching things up after their disagreements at the small council. After they exchange apologies, Viserys reminds Corlys that as king, it is his duty to avoid war until it becomes unavoidable. Corlys points out how precarious Viserys's reign currently looks, his wife has passed, a girl has been named heir, his disinherited brother has been allowed to seize Dragonstone, and a foreign power has established a foothold in one of their most critical shipping lanes. He urges Viserys to strengthen his image in two ways, firstly by taking back the Stepstones, and secondly by wedding his daughter Lena, thus uniting the Targaryen dragons and the Valerian fleet by blood. Taken aback by the proposal, Viserys admits he hadn't given much thought to marriage after Emma's death, but Rhaenys reminds him that it will be expected of him to take a new wife so as to produce more heirs and strengthen his line. That night, Viserys and Rhaenyra eat dinner together. They briefly talk about their shared love for Emma, but Viserys is still preoccupied thinking about Corlys's proposal, and is reluctant to speak of it to Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra tells Viserys that of all the knights that were gathered to replace Esser Ryam on the Kingsguard, only Esser Kristen Cole had real combat experience, and he expresses his confidence that Esser Kristen will make a fine knight of the Kingsguard. She tries to apologize for speaking out at the small council earlier, but he dismisses it, stating that she is young, and will learn propriety in time. Afterwards, Viserys goes to Melos for treatment of his gangrenous finger, and Melos provides maggots to remove the dead flesh and stop the advance of the rot. Viserys informs Melos and Otto Hightower of Lord Corlys's proposal that he marry Lena, to which Otto claims that Corlys has overreached by going over the heads of the small council. He expresses his doubts about the union due to Lena's young age, but Melos advises Viserys to accept on the basis that it would help mend the rift between their houses suffered at the Great Council of 101. Viserys is still hesitant, due to his doubts that Rhaenyra would approve, and secretly, his burgeoning feelings for Alicent, but Melos reminds him that it is his duty to remarry and continue to propagate the royal line. Otto expresses sympathy to Viserys over his position of having to replace his beloved wife for the sake of duty. The next day, Viserys walks through the gardens with the twelve-year-old Lena Valerian, Lena, however, seems more interested in dragons than marriage, asking Viserys about his experience riding Balerion, and the potential whereabouts of Vagar. She does eventually promise Viserys that she will give him many pure-blooded Valerian children if he were to marry her, but Viserys can tell that she is merely repeating the words her father told her to say, and asks her what her mother told her. She replies that her mother told her she wouldn't have to bed Viserys until she turned 14, making him visibly uncomfortable. Later that evening, Viserys dines privately in Alicent's company, where she commiserates with him over his reluctance at wedding a new queen. She reveals that she had the stonemasons fix the dragon model he broke. Touched, Viserys thanks her for the gift. Their conversation is interrupted by the arrival of Alicent's father, who informs Viserys that he has called an emergency meeting of the small council. The small council is informed by a dragonkeeper elder that Demon has stolen a dragon egg. Melos reads out a letter declaring Demon's intention to take a second wife, Mysaria, and to place the stolen egg in the cradle of his unborn child by Mysaria, in the tradition of House Targaryen. The letter also invites Viserys to Demon's wedding in two days' time. Knowing that Demon is trying to provoke him, Viserys initially refuses to take action, but when Rhaenyra asks the dragonkeeper which egg was stolen, he reveals that it was the same egg she chose for Prince Balin's cradle. Enraged, Viserys announces his intention to lead a detachment to Dragonstone and drag Demon back to face justice, but Otto advises against it, as it would be too dangerous, and says he'll go himself. Viserys relents. After Otto and his men leave, Viserys holds a private audience with Master of Laws Lionel Strong, wanting an impartial opinion about a prospective marriage to Lena Valerian. He expresses his discomfort at marrying a twelve-year-old, but Lord Lionel states that he should marry her pointing out that strengthening an alliance with House Valerian could temper Corlys's bitterness over the Great Council's decision, unify the last descendants of Valyria, and ensure the Crown has access to the Valerian fleet should the situation in the Stepstones deteriorate and to open war. The meeting is interrupted by Esser Stefan Darklin of the Kingsguard, announcing that Rhaenyra has returned from Dragonstone, much to Viserys's shock and confusion. Viserys has Rhaenyra brought to his chambers, 
where he angrily chides her for going to Dragonstone without the crown's leave, and putting herself in danger, reminding her that she is his only heir. He is calmed, however, when Rhaenyra points out that she retrieved the stolen egg without bloodshed. They speak about Emma for a time, bonding over their shared grief, and Viserys notes that Rhaenyra has inherited a lot from her. They then reluctantly broach the topic of a prospective remarriage. Viserys emphasizes that he could never replace Emma, but with only Rhaenyra as his heir, were anything to happen to her, House Targaryen could come to an end, and though Viserys insists he will not replace Rhaenyra as his heir, even if his new wife were to give him sons, he must ensure the continuation of their line. Rhaenyra assures him that she understands that as king, Viserys's first duty is to the realm, and that Emma would have understood as well. Viserys calls a small council meeting the next morning, where he announces, to everyone's shock, that he intends to marry Alicent Hightower. Lord Corlys, enraged by this perceived insult to his family, protests the decision, to which Viserys reminds him that he is his king, causing Corlys to storm out. To Viserys's surprise, a shocked and hurt Rhaenyra shortly follows him. A year after his marriage to Alicent, she gives him a son, who they name Aegon. On Aegon's second name day, Viserys organizes a royal hunt in the Kingswood, excited to leave the politics of court behind. As the party prepares for departure, his new master of ships, Esser Tyland Lannister, counsels him to send aid to Prince Demon and Lord Corlys in their efforts to retake the stepstones from the crabfeeder. Viserys, however, is preoccupied by the absence of his daughter, and demands to know where Rhaenyra is. As the hunting party departs, Viserys rides in the royal carriage with his pregnant queen Alicent and his children Rhaenyra and Aegon. Viserys is excited about the prospect of their entire family riding off to a hunt together, but Rhaenyra, still angry at both him and Alicent, responds coldly. She has no desire to join them in the hunt, though he reminds her that she has duties as the princess. Upon arriving in the Kingswood, Viserys emerges from the carriage, followed by Alicent and their baby Aegon, who several of the gathered lords and ladies, most notably, Lord Hobart Hightower, applaud and hail as the second of his name. After she is proposed to by Jason Lannister, Rhaenyra furiously confronts Viserys, accusing him of trying to marry her off to the great houses like a prize. Viserys reminds her that she is of age, and that he has tried to talk with her about the countless proposals he has received for her hand, but she has refused to discuss it. When Rhaenyra claims that she has no desire to marry, Viserys shouts that even he isn't above tradition and duty, causing the whole crowd gathered in the tent to look in their direction. Their argument is interrupted by Otto Hightower, informing Viserys that a white heart has been spotted, a regal portent for Aegon's name day, he claims. Viserys then notices that Rhaenyra has left. Viserys is informed by the royal huntsman, Esser Howland Sharp, that the white heart's fresh droppings were found half a league to the east, and that they now have its trail. Sharp reminds Viserys that the White Heart was the symbol of royalty in Westeros before the dragons came, to which Otto once again comments on the significance of such a creature appearing on Prince Aegon's name day. That night, Viserys, doubtful and conflicted over his choice of heir, drinks several cups of wine. He is approached by Jason Lannister, with a gift of a spear he had forged in the Golden Gallery of Castley Rock in honor of Prince Aegon, in hopes that it might provide the killing stroke against the White Heart. Viserys thanks him for the gift, but becomes annoyed when Jason asks for Rhaenyra's hand. Jason tells Viserys that he and many other lords had assumed that he would name Aegon as his heir, to which Viserys reminds him that he did not name Rhaenyra his heir on a whim. Viserys is then approached by Otto, who informs him that it won't be long until the White Heart is cornered, and asks what he thinks of Jason's proposal, to which Viserys remarks, that man's pride has pride. When Otto reminds him that Rhaenyra will do as he commands, Viserys replies that he has no desire to command his own daughter, but simply wants her to be happy. Otto then suggests he marry Rhaenyra to her brother, Prince Aegon, but Viserys refuses, as Aegon is only two years old. As Otto continues to press the matter, Viserys laughs in exasperation, as had come to hunt, but instead he is still being suffocated by politics. Otto leaves, and Viserys continues to drown himself in wine. He is approached by Lord Lionel Strong, who informs him that they have sent out riders to find Rhaenyra, and that Esser Criston also went with her. Viserys, now quite drunk, vents his frustration at not being able to control his own daughter. 
to which Lionel reminds him that even King Jaehaerys had trouble controlling his children, especially his daughters. Lionel offers his advice on the matter of finding a match for Rhaenyra, and Viserys assumes that he will propose his own son, Esser Harwin Strong as her match. To his surprise, however, Lionel does no such thing, instead suggesting she be married to Laenor Valerian, the son of Lord Corlys, as he has Valyrian blood, and their union could help sat Corlys and mend the widened rift between their houses. Viserys leaves the tent, giving Lionel a grateful pat on the shoulder. Viserys continues drinking in front of a pyre, where he is joined by Alicent. He spills out his feelings to her, telling her about his dragon dream of placing his son upon the Iron Throne, and expressing his tremendous guilt over causing his wife's death in pursuit of that dream. He says he named Rhaenyra his heir as a means of setting things right, as he never imagined he would remarry and have a son. He wonders if he was wrong to name Rhaenyra his heir. The next morning, the hunting party has successfully captured a stag, but to Viserys's relief, it is not a white one, and therefore not a sign that he chose wrong. Using Jason Lannister's spear, Viserys kills the restrained animal, with great difficulty and reluctance, having to spear it again after botching his first attempt. The party applauds him afterwards. Later, Viserys and the rest of the party watch in some surprise as Rhaenyra returns to the camp with a boar that she and Esser Kristen Cole killed. The night after the hunting party returns to King's Landing, Viserys, now hungover from all the drinking, is visited by Alicent in his chambers. They discuss the matter of Rhaenyra's betrothal, with Alicent telling Viserys that she will not marry unless she thinks it's by her own choice. Alicent discovers a letter Viserys was sent by Vaemon Valerian, the brother of Lord Corlys, informing him that the fighting in the Stepstones is going poorly, and pleading for aid. Viserys is reluctant to send it, as to do so after so long would make him look weak, and remarks that he is forever doomed to anger one person in the pleasing of another. Alicent simplifies the problem for him. As king, Viserys must serve the realm, and the realm will only benefit if the crab feeder is vanquished. This sufficiently sways Viserys. The next morning, Viserys summons Rhaenyra to the small council chamber, as he sends Esser Adam to the Stepstones with a letter promising to send ten ships and two thousand men to their aid. Rhaenyra accuses Viserys of wanting to replace her with Aegon, the boy he always wanted, but Viserys assures her that he has no intention of doing so, and only wants to see her happy. He reminds her that she has always understood the necessity of rulers marrying for advantage, to which Rhaenyra retorts that if it was truly for advantage, he would have married Lena Valerian, a point Viserys concedes. He tells her that she must marry and produce offspring to strengthen her own claim, but allows her to choose her own match, as he did. As Rhaenyra begins to leave, Viserys assures her that, while he did waver at one time, she will not be supplanted as heir, swearing this on the memory of her mother. Alicent later gives Viserys a daughter, who they name Helena. Some time later, a crowd assembles before the Iron Throne as Viserys puts on his full regalia to welcome back his brother Demon after his victory in the Stepstones. He is shocked and annoyed to see Rhaenyra there, as she is supposed to be on a tour to find a husband, which he worked hard to arrange. Demon enters the room, carrying his sword, dark sister, and the crabfeeder's hammer, and also wearing a crown made of bone and driftwood. Viserys comments on the crown, and Demon tells him that he was named King of the Narrow Sea after defeating the Triarchy. However, he says he knows that there is only one true king, and kneels to Viserys, giving him the crown and the stepstones. Viserys asks where Lord Corlys is, and Demon tells him that he sailed home to Driftmark. Demon claims that he had 2,000 dead Triarchy corsairs staked to the sand as a warning for anyone else who might challenge them. Coming down from the throne, Viserys orders Demon to rise, and embraces his brother. The entire court applauds their reconciliation. Viserys holds a feast in Demon's honor in the Red Keep's Godswood, where he shares happy stories with his brother, who he hasn't seen in years. He good naturedly admits that Demon was always their mother's favorite, as like him, she was a warrior and a rule breaker who didn't care about customs or tradition. Alicent asks Demon if he would like to see the new tapestries from Norvos and Kohor on display in the gallery, but Viserys laughs at this suggestion, as Demon has no interest in such things. Rhaenyra says she would like to see them, and Viserys tersely excuses her. At a small council meeting, Tyland Lannister gives Viserys troubling news. Now that the Valerian fleet hold the Stepstones, Lord Corlys can control the vital shipping lanes going through it 
giving him considerable leverage over the crown. Viserys can't believe Corlys is still upset about him spurning the marriage alliance with Lena after so many years, but as Melos points out, Corlys is a proud man whose pride has been wounded. Otto Hightower reveals that the situation is worse than that. According to his brother in Aldtown, Lord Corlys plans to marry Lena to the son of the Sea Lord of Bravos. This potential alliance would necessitate the crown making a marriage pact of their own. That night, Viserys takes a bath. The infection he is suffering from wasn't stopped by amputating two of his fingers, only slowed, and the sores on his back are slightly worse than before. Alicent dismisses the handmaidens and bathes Viserys' sores herself, with him commenting that her touch feels far kinder than theirs. Later, Viserys summons Alicent to his chambers, and the two of them have sex, though Alicent receives no pleasure from it. Early the next morning, Viserys is woken by Otto Hightower, who delivers troubling news. Rhaenyra was spotted at a pleasure house the previous night. This in and of itself doesn't alarm Viserys, but Otto goes on to say that she was herself, coupling, at the brothel, not just looking, and with her own uncle demon. Viserys is incredulous and says that it must be a lie, demanding to know who is responsible for this gossip so he can take their eyes. He then redirects his anger at Otto, accusing him of being so ambitious that he would have his daughter stocked with spies to destroy her reputation. Otto tries to deny this, but Viserys refuses to believe it, ordering Otto out. After Otto leaves, Viserys turns to find Alicent, who overheard the conversation. Several hours later, Viserys has demons seized by the Kingsguard. They drag a hungover demon before the Iron Throne and throw him to the floor, and after they leave, Viserys walks in to confront his brother, accusing him of defiling his daughter, and kicking him in the ribs when he doesn't deny it. Demon reminds Viserys that they visited most of the brothels on the Street of Silk when they were Rhaenyra's age, to which Viserys responds that they were young men, whereas Rhaenyra is just a girl. Demon counters that Rhaenyra is legally a woman grown, and half sarcastically says that it's better that her first experience is with him than some random whore. Enraged, Viserys demands to know what lord would wed her in this condition. Demon says that it doesn't matter what any lord wants, as Viserys is the dragon, and his word is law. When Viserys angrily says that he should disinherit Rhaenyra as he did Demon, Demon brazenly says that he will wed her. Viserys stifles a laugh at the absurdity, as Demon is already married to Rhea Royce, to which Demon points out that Aegon the Conqueror took a second wife. Viserys is so insulted that he draws his Valyrian steel dagger and holds it to Demon's throat, kneeling on his chest, and saying that he is no conqueror, but a plague upon their house. When Demon continues to insist that if Viserys gives him Rhaenyra, together they will restore House Targaryen to its proper glory, Viserys bitterly accuses him of wanting his throne more than his daughter. Viserys rises, and dismissively tells Demon to go back to the Vale and his lawful wife, and to try to restore what scrap of honor he may have left. Or not, it makes no difference to him, as he never wants to see Demon again. In his chambers, a rattled Viserys looks out from his balcony over the city while Alicent brings him a cup of wine. She tells him that she talked with Rhaenyra, and that she denied having sex with Demon, and isn't known for being deceitful, whereas Demon rarely tells the full truth, thus he was likely lying about having sex with Rhaenyra. Viserys is baffled as to how Demon claiming such things could possibly serve him, to which Alicent suggests that Demon's entire goal was simply to taunt his older brother for disinheriting him. Viserys says that whatever happened, he can still sense that Rhaenyra is not innocent of any wrongdoing. Alicent earnestly insists that Rhaenyra swore to her that she remains a maiden, and she believes her. That night, Viserys summons Rhaenyra to his quarters. He shows her the Valyrian steel dagger, which he has been heating in a brazier of fire, and explains to her that the dagger was carried by Aegon the Conqueror, and generations before him, by Aenar Targaryen when he left Valyria. Viserys further explains that before Aegon the Conqueror died, when he realized that the apocalyptic winter he saw in his dragon dream would not happen in his own lifetime, he sought to pass the warning on to future generations of their dynasty. In addition to passing the story down from king to heir, Aegon himself also commissioned the last of the old Valyrian pyromancers to etch a hidden message onto his personal dagger, only visible when it is heated red hot. He hands the heated dagger to Rhaenyra, who reads off the high Valyrian glyphs on it. From my blood come the prince that was promised and his will be the song of ice and fire. Viserys says that the responsibility he has handed to Rhaenyra, 
the burden of this knowledge, is larger than the throne or herself, or her desires. She says that she hasn't been given a chance to defend herself, to which he replies that the truth doesn't matter, only the perception of it does. Rhaenyra protests that had she been born a man, she could bed whomever she wanted, even father a dozen bastards, and no one at court would blink an eye. Viserys bluntly tells her that she is right, but she was born a woman, which means she cannot. He says that Jaehaerys would have disinherited her for this, but he does not have that luxury, as his duty is to hold the realm together in preparation for the doom Aegon foresaw. They are on the verge of civil war with House Valerian, and a marriage alliance between their families is needed to reunite them with the rest of the realm. He commands Rhaenyra to marry Corlys's son Laenor Valerian, a match he knows Corlys will only accept if Rhaenyra is the named heir to the Iron Throne. Rhaenyra begrudgingly accepts the match, but only on the condition that Viserys dismisses Otto Hightower as Hand of the King. Viserys at first scoffs that every lord on his council is self-interested somehow, not just Otto, but Rhaenyra insists that Otto is so self-interested that he would indeed jeopardize the stability of the realm in his goal to put an heir with Hightower blood on the throne. While reluctant, Viserys has not been blind to Otto's constant attempts at manipulation over the years, and he grudgingly relents. Later, Viserys summons Otto to the small council chamber. He immediately launches into the story of how his own father, Balin Targaryen, died only five days after King Jaehaerys named him Hand, after which Otto took his place, and wonders how long it took Otto to start choosing his own interests over those of his king. Viserys says that Alicent did get him through the worst of his grief after Emma died, but he now realizes that Otto set her up to be his wife to put his blood on the Iron Throne. Otto insists that Alicent loves him, as he knows Viserys loves her. Viserys doesn't deny this, but says that Otto's interests no longer align with those of the realm. Pained, Viserys says that the crown and the realm owe Otto a great debt that can never be repaid, but he can no longer trust his judgment. He dismisses Otto as Hand of the King, and removes his pin of office. Viserys then has Melos deliver a bottle of moon tea to Rhaenyra to rid herself of any unwanted consequences of whatever sexual encounters she may have had. This article is a stub, an article too short to provide more than rudimentary information about a subject. You can help the Game of Thrones wiki by expanding it.